Hi guys, it's Benjamin Dada here and this is The Big Tech Show. I'm right here at the AFF about to speak to the head of Africa Fintech Foundry, Daniel Awe. Also, I've got Ade Bajomo, who is the ED of Technology Operations at Access Bank, but also the president of Fintech Association of Nigeria. This is The Big Tech Show, where tech leads. Hi Daniel. Hi, how you doing? So good to finally yeah, have you so here. Yeah, so good to see you. The first thing I really want to establish, right, is the impact of um, technology and digital on, on our lives, right? Um, so there are a lot of apps, <laughs> there are a lot of products, and I just want to know from your own point of view, how has that really um, shaped you? How has that impacted you, your lifestyle? Yeah. Well, um, I'm a technology person. Okay. Um, I was born into technology, mm -hmm. I would say that, and uh, I'm not going to say how did it shape my life, Okay. It's about how did it shape my life and the entire people around me, my okay. ecosystem. Okay. So for me, um, yeah. I would start with a simple um, banking. Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember the last time I went to the banking or to do transaction in Perfect. years. That's yeah. number one. Number two, even where I go to naturally, I okay. would use Google Maps to know right. about the traffic, about what is going on there. And, yeah. um, and if you look at even... Um, ordering food. Mm -hmm. I hardly go to restaurants. I rather just order online and other right. stuff. So, of course, our life has been driven by technology. Right. And if you look at it by extension, um, my driver, my maid, I would rather transfer money to them. And yes. then, so, it's become an ecosystem of our life. So, technology has shaped my life all through. And because I'm also um, a creator of payments mm -hmm. in, the, in Nigeria. Um. I think that that makes a lot of sense. Same thing with me. I just stay in my house. I work from home. Technology enables video conferencing, um, and I do a lot of things I want to do. And if we come towards banking, right? What are some of the coolest products or fintech products that you've seen, you know, and you've experienced? The first true mobile banking app in Nigeria. The right. first true app. When you say mobile banking app, you understand. Um, uh, I was one of the people that designed and built it. That's the Diamond that's, Mobile that, app. That, that's you understand? Yes. So probably sometimes I have the authority to speak about the coolest app and yeah. to tell you um, what is uh, what we have in the market. And I think I've seen a lot of nice apps. You okay. understand? But of course, um, at the moment, I don't think there's any app that is better than the Access Bank Access More app. Yeah. I mean, not because yeah. Um, yeah. there is a kind of relationship with Access Bank, but the thinking, the technology, the right. engineering, you understand, the experience yeah. behind it. Yeah. It's just something that we, we, we probably spend the best of time to look at that. But mm -hmm. looking at only Access Bank, Access Um there are some nice apps. I love um, OP. Okay. Probably very, very, very simple, yeah. clean. Yeah. Um, I think I also love um, um, Kuda Bank, you know. Okay. I mean, also okay. a very cool app. Yeah. And there are some other non-banking apps that I've seen that are quite very nice. I love um, Thank You Cash. Yeah. Very nice app. Yeah. And, uh, there are some it's cool similar ones. To... And I think Nigeria has actually grown, you yeah. understand, in terms of um, the space has grown. And um, we have built products on the, in, the, in that space that I think can compete with anyone in the world right now. Yeah, and, and I agree with you on that. Especially, you know, we were chatting about how, you know, some banking apps are very fragmented. So the channels for mobile banking entirely disconnected from internet banking but with access more and some of the other apps i've i've used from access bank those ones are connected so if i have my beneficiaries through the mobile app i can use them on the internet banking and i think that's a real well done to you and the team yeah um, that. thank you i think yeah. um it, it's a journey you know yeah. for you to be successful yeah. you understand as a bank yeah. you must deploy an omni channel yeah and uh, it's painful when i look at some banks without omni channel you go to your mobile banking you go to your internet banking yeah. you have different beneficiaries yeah. the experience is bad yeah. so i think um if you look at um the strategy of omni channel mm -hmm. i'm going to 
go back to the tech space, I will start with um, Apple. Okay. Apple probably one of the best in terms of uh, omni channel. Mm -hmm. When you have uh, your high iPhone, when you have your MacBook, yeah. when you have your iPod, yeah. whatever you have, everything sync automatically. That's yes. just a simple um, theory and um, uh, platform called omni channel. Yes. So now come back to banking. Yeah. If you look at Access Bank, Access Bank has run a successful omni channel platform. Oh, so done. when you have when you're on your internet banking, your yeah. beneficiaries across the entire platform, when you're on your as a matter of fact, it's on the ATM as well. You can expose your beneficiary to the ATM. Right. So it's an omni channel technology and it's, it's a model yeah. that has successfully um, driven retail business across the world. Interesting. Uh, when you look at the world, the top leaders in the in banking, banking technology. Mm -hmm. If you don't run an omni channel, so yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, it, it helps people connect their lives and just continue their lives. So you know, your 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 document creation can be on the go. Absolutely. You can start with your your desktop, and then the same Google Doc, for instance, is still opening on your mobile. Another example of yes. the omni channel. Omni -channel. So it's, yeah. I mean, Google too has done something. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's that's the at the moment that's the, the future. Platform. That's the world. Understand. Yeah. Um, I think I would come towards Africa FinTech Foundry. I think a lot of people will benefit from um, the AFF, and I'm sure they would agree with me. Um, what are some of the highlights for 2021? So, um, first of all, I'll start with AFF. Okay. Um, Africa FinTech Foundry. Um, when people talk to me about Africa FinTech Foundry, it's, it's always an, I mean, <laughs> I'm almost developing, uh, you understand, this, um, what is it called? There's a, there's a feeling that comes as if Holy Ghost has come onto me. <laughs> always excited to talk about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. And then yeah. um, why is because of one thing. The biggest opportunity in Nigeria is still something that we've not even discovered. True. So we see the likes of Paystack, mm -hmm. at, I mean, in, um, with about $200 million investment. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. We have thousands of pay stack in Nigeria. Yes. I mean, currently we're running an accelerator program okay. and there are about 306 applications. Oh, and I wow. look, and we look through all those applications. It was a lot of pain to streamline to 15 because right. you just realize that these guys are just very innovative. Cool it's things. just that there is no environment. Yeah. So coming back to AFF, Africa yeah. FinTech Foundry. So our first um, pillar yeah. is an acceleration program okay. where we could identify the best of the best startup, uh -huh. bring them into AFF, accelerate uh -huh. them, take them through a mentorship program, uh -huh. take them through a corporate governance strategy. Uh -huh. How do you build your business? We now yeah. bring them up for funding. Right. So when you win the accelerator, you are the best in that program, uh -huh. we have a certain fund for you. Uh -huh. However, we are working with some venture capitalists. I think um, at the moment we are doing a syndication okay. of a fund, local and offshore. Okay. okay. Which is okay. going to be invested in all these startups. Yeah. So probably this version of our accelerator is going to change the market. Yeah. We want to compete with uh, YC. We want to show YC yeah. that yes, in this part of this world, that is our own um, local accelerator yeah. that can also bring the best of the best of the best. Yeah. So one of our key pillars is yeah. that we run an accelerator program. Okay. That's number one. Yeah. Then number two, we are also an innovation hub. Okay. Where we create new products. innovation, yeah. new products, new um, payment solution. So we have a team of um, payment um, strategists uh -huh. that runs our payment innovation lab. Yeah. So where we are going to be bringing out some products. I mean, when I say products, I'm not talking of products that exist today that we just package. Yes. We are creating new payment solutions that doesn't exist today and that can drive payments in Nigeria and that we even drive payments across the continent. Right. You understand? So we are an innovation hub where yeah. we're going to be creating stuff around payment. Then we are setting up the first artificial intelligence lab. Right. Where we're also going to be creating a lot around AI. How can we use AI to drive medical um, sector? Okay. How can we drive um, education? Yeah. How can we drive um, agriculture? Mm -hmm. So we are working around creating the, an artificial intelligence lab where even undergraduates, mm -hmm. and uh, there are so many PhD holders in computer science in Nigeria that have never seen what an AI lab is. True. So where they can come in and people can innovate. Yeah. So we are an innovation hub. Yeah. Then number three, by nature of our part, I mean, of our uh, relationship with Access Bank, okay. we also enable Access Bank digitally. Yeah. So at the moment, um, we are building um, the first multi-tenancy hub across mm -hmm. Access Nation. Well, as you know, Access Bank is a nation now. Yes. So you have Access Nigeria, yeah. you have Gambia, you have Congo, you have South Africa coming yeah. up. 
We yeah. have uh, Zimbabwe, we have Mozambique, uh -huh. we have uh, uh -huh. Ghana, we have Sierra Leone. Yeah. So now we're going to run the first first uh, African bank multi-tenancy app. Right. It's the same access more, which yes. I think is probably the, one of the best app in the world. I'm yeah. not talking in Nigeria. Yeah. I'm proud to say that. It's one of the best app in the world yeah. because... I mean, you need to, to download it and understand what I'm saying. Yes. So it's only a single app for the entire Access family. Mm -hmm. So when you're in Kenya, it has a geo, it has a geo intelligence that knows that you're in Kenya. Yeah. And it gives Kenya customer a, their own interface. Yes. When you're in yes. Gambia, yes. it knows you're in Gambia. Mm -hmm. You understand? <laughs>
I mean, we are in a very, very unique position in Nigeria right now from a technology perspective. Okay. You know, I was saying earlier on in a different uh, 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 talk that, uh, you know, we say we're in the fourth industrial revolution right now or at the tail end of the fourth industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, and if you look at Africa as a whole, what happened to us in the first, second, and third industrial revolution? Right. Yeah, absolutely nothing. Missing. Yeah, it was missing. <laughs> this is the fourth revolution that Africans are participating in, solving unique problems in Africa for Africans, but leveraging global collaboration, global technology, global networks, and global investment flows as well. Yep. So it's a great time, and I think uh, this is just the start of it. Um, uh, you know, we're, we're towards the tail end of the fourth industrial revolution, as people will tell you. You know, we're now coming into the fifth one, and in the fifth industrial revolution, this is where Africa really comes alive. Mm -hmm. And we have to explore all the resources we have, not just the natural resources, mm -hmm. but the human capital that we can actually unleash to drive this revolution. Right, right. So you've mentioned two very important things, right? Investment and human capital. So let me start from human capital. Um, there has been a trend, right, of internal migration, right? So talents are moving from the banking sector to the startup stage. And the talents are moving from startups and banking out of the country. How do you think we can build and retain our talent pipeline so that when we're supposed to be participating in this fifth industrial revolution, our talents are not missing? You know, we're in a very unique position here. Again, um, you know, I was uh, I was around obviously in 2000, and what we're seeing in the year 2000, the dot com bubble, by the way, okay. as it's called there, it's not different from a talent perspective to what we're seeing right now. Mm. You know, now there are you know everybody, you know, some people call it digital transformation, but that's all that. You know, it's now digital surge. You mm. know, because you know if you're still transforming. <laughs> You're behind, really. People are moving yeah. well ahead yeah. of that, really. But just pause a minute and think, yeah? The whole world, or certainly a significant part of the world, mm -hmm. yeah, is now going digital on steroids. Right. So uh, look at autonomous cars. Mm -hmm. Look at electric cars. Mm -hmm. Look at all of those top. You know, when a car can tell you when it's due for a service or it's got a, the tire is, you know, is running low on air and automatically calls for help. How do you think all of that is happening? It's chips. It's programmers, it's computer technologies, AI, all of those things coming together. Mm -hmm. So there's a shortage, there's a global shortage. It's not a Nigerian shortage, it's a global shortage yeah. Yeah, of resources. And if we thought we have a problem in terms of that global shortage, it's just starting. Wow. But again, it's just starting because we're not just competing now. I mean, we were talking earlier on that, you were yeah. talking about you know banks losing to uh, staff to fintech, yeah. fintechs in turn losing uh, their staff to, international, to the international yeah. world. Well, even in the international world now, yeah, they're gonna be losing staff amongst themselves, some yeah. of them will have to come to Africa and all of that. So the whole world is actually transforming together. It's one of the unique things of the fourth industrial revolution yeah. going to the fifth. Sort of you levels know. everything. In, and, yeah. yeah, you yeah. know, if you, you just cast your mind, when steam engine was invented, it had to be used up in the parts of the world it was invented in and then exported to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Here, mm -hmm. you have everybody now being part and parcel of that whole uh, 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 thing. So we have to do some unique things. I mean, clearly talent will always be premium. Okay. Talent will always be rare. Okay. So, you know, organizations, companies, individuals have to develop themselves and they have to develop and retain talent within themselves. But what's more important is culture. You must, you must be clear about the culture you want to create. Because mm -hmm. without that culture, yeah, then talent, yeah, is not just going to fit. You can't bring somebody from outer space drop in there. They just won't know, you yeah. know, what to do. But then, you know, people will do all sorts of strategies, retention strategies, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, you see, you know, companies like Google and we have our own uh, local example, you know, uh, BGG and Co. You know, if you mm -hmm. go to their workspaces, you yeah. know, it's all about creating spaces which make people comfortable, yeah. work creatively. So you will see all of that going on in steroids. But fundamentally, yeah, we have to bake a bigger cake yeah. in terms of talent. So when we talk about baking a bigger cake, what we're talking about is increasing that talent pool. Yeah. Yeah. So that means that you know organizations that are really serious about digitalization, you know, have to not just think about themselves. They have to mm -hmm. think about the wider society. You have to basically produce and train more than you need. That's right. the only way it's going to work. Yeah. Because in a country where or in a society where everybody just wants to take their own little bit, there'll be nothing left. Yeah. Nobody will grow. We just all become small-minded. Our approach, our vision, is to create and develop a larger talent pool right. than we will ever need. Mm. Yeah, so we will take what we want, but we can supply into that pool as well. And just imagine if everybody who has the ability to do that, does just a little bit of that, yeah. give a little bit back. You know, you're not just giving back to your organization, you're giving back to the society, society. at large. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's speak a bit about fintechs, right? You're the president of the Fintech Association of Nigeria. 
and you wear two hats, right? So literally, you're in the best place to tell us from the banking side and from the fintech side, you know, the sort of collaborations or partnerships to be had to move the country forward. Mm -hmm. So for, for us, really, in Fintech NGR, that's Fintech Nigeria, okay. you know, our role is to grow a bigger ecosystem that collaborates and promotes you know, that Fintech uh, industry within the country. Mm. And when I use the word Fintech, eh, I know it's so easy to just box it into financial technology. We use it in a slightly looser way okay. yeah, to talk about innovation, startups, and any other creative uh, 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 initiative that people may have. So okay. you could be talking Meditech, you could be talking Agritech, yeah. you could be talking, you know, cost payments, etc., mm -hmm. which is over, over, overrated, yeah, in many ways. And, and you can see why everybody's in payments, yeah. <laughs> but you know, the opportunities. They have like the gone. exits. They have like you know the fundraises, you know, all of that to back it up. Yes, and and you know, you know, uh, everybody has to make a payment. Yes. Ultimately, even if you don't have money in the bank. You have to make a transaction at some yeah. point. You have to exchange value. So payments will continue to be attractive. Yeah. And we can talk a little bit more uh, on that, really. But, but um, uh, it's about that ecosystem, that we get that ecosystem together. We get it energetic. And that ecosystem yeah. is not just about banks and fintechs. It's about lawyers. Because when you go look at this, really, um, you know, you're talking about protecting IP rights and yes. all of those kind of stuff. Yes. You know, yes. you're looking at legal contracts. You're looking at all sorts of things around there. You yeah. know, so the ecosystem goes all the way to universities, R and D environments. Yeah. You know, so the obvious parts of the ecosystem is not just the investors and the regulators. It is a much more extensive uh, ecosystem. We can uh, connect the ecosystem to partners that want to uh, 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 drive things forward, and we can advocate. Okay. on behalf of, of the industry. And yeah. indeed, many of the regulators, you know, uh, 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 in the financial services and beyond, have invited us to, you know, contribute, write papers, provide insights, and provide yeah. guidance. Within the fintech space, we've seen payments, we've seen API fintechs, right? What do you think um, the future would look like, right? Once API fintechs are allowed to um, explore, grow, and, you know, utilize banks' years of data, banks distribution you know what, what can come about you know that that is the next evolution of finance there are many parts to the evolution of finance as we knew it it's going to change completely and you're very right apis are one of the facilitators huge facilitators of that change but i also say very quickly that in my own words yeah apis are the potential weapons of mass financial destruction if apis are deployed wrongly yeah, there will be no bank. There will be no financial services institution. Literally none. Yeah, and I'm not exaggerating here. You know, uh, 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 there's a study by McKinsey, I believe, uh, that, that indicated that by the year 2030, over 50% of failure of financial services institution would be from cyber security lapses. Right. Yeah, so if, if you just think of that, banks usually fail because of uh, NPL. Yeah, and maybe a bit of governance issue or lack of capital. But typical NPL, you know, is usually the killer of banks, ultimately, right. really. When you now bring in cybersecurity as a potential, then it changes the landscape. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the issue is not throwing away the baby with the birthwater. The right. issue is how do you then make this thrive, knowing the threats and how to manage the threat, really, mm -hmm. you know. And that, you know, as we move towards API banking, and that is irreversible, yeah, because from a customer, from a consumer perspective, the consumers want it. You want the flexibility that it gives you because, you know, from a provider perspective, from a service provider, product provider perspective, the products you can offer to actually bring about an enduring customer experience is huge. Why do I want to go into five banking apps when I can consolidate all my statements into one, for yes. example, yes. you know, and so on and so forth. So what it gives and the products you can offer becomes phenomenal with huge ease of use. So that merging together, one of the benefits of fintechs collaborating with banks and established players is marrying those two. Fintechs can benefit in terms of compliance, governance, uh, yeah. and the banks, of course, in terms of agility, you know, at, uh, 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 time to market products, and, yeah. and all of the good things that come with that. Hi, I'm Adil Bajamor, Executive Director for Technology and Operations Access Bank PLC, and President, Fintech Nigeria. This is the Big Tech Show, Brought to you by AFF and Accelerate TV. Enjoy. It's been a long day of exclusive interviews. I had a conversation with Daniel Awe and Adeba Jomo, and we spoke about the future of fintech and banking collaboration in Nigeria. Till next time, 
It's Benjamin Dada, and this is The Big Tech Show.